Hello and welcome to the Calculator Guide video on the NumWorks graphical calculator. So this is a new calculator that has been released from NumWorks and it's the first time that I've, I've actually seen it and one of the great things that I've discovered with this particular company is that they have provided uh, an online simulator for the calculator for free so you can go in and test it out and see what all the functions and features do and that's what we're going to do in this video and I'll put the link below for you to go and have a go at that simulator yourself and see what you think for yourself. Well let's have a look at what modes we've got in here. Um, we have a calculation mode to start off with. Now I imagine that that is is really the standard mode uh, where you can do all your sort of basic calculations, basic functions and things. Um, so let's just try 8 times cos 60 and there we go 4 yeah so no cos 60 is a half and so we've worked that out um, does have a star symbol here rather than a multiply what else have we got and we've got exponential natural logarithm logarithm doesn't have to any base here although I imagine maybe you could do uh, let's have a look let's see if there's a comma we could put in yeah, so that, that's worked out quite well there. So we can do log to any base. Log to base of two of eight is uh, three. Uh, so that's quite good. We've got I for um, complex numbers there. We seem to have a, an indices function and a shortcut to x squared, square root pi. Um, so a lot of the essential things that we need uh, for sort of normal calculations and uh, let's go back to the home menu then let's have a look what else we've got well we've got a functions menu now this operates a little bit similar to table mode on the Casio calculators but also combines a graphical function as well um, so let's put in a function of x we can see that there's a multiple letter input function here X or N or T depending on depending on what kind of input you're going for whether that's maybe uh, a sequence or maybe parametric equations or just a, a function of X in this case I believe it will be a function of X uh, so let's input uh, X squared minus let's go for 5 X minus 15 and let's execute. Okay, so that's now stored in there. So if we navigate to graph, we should see a graph of that function. Oh, here we go. Um, we've got a graph of the function there, and I think we can trace different things on here. Um, we can trace through on the graph. Okay, that's quite good. Axes, let's see, we can do just the axes there. Uh, go back, zoom in, presumably, with pre-adjustment. Okay, interesting. It appears to have changed the axes slightly there, uh, perhaps adjusting it to certain level, whether it's integer or, or whatever. Uh, let's just dive into table mode here. So we've already inputted that function. Um, it looks like the default goes from naught down to 10 okay um, so presumably we set in interval we can change that so perhaps we can have going from negative 6 to 12 and then we'll make step 2 so going up in twos down to confirm and there we go yes so that operates a little bit similar to the um, the Casio one there um, just on this first instance I'm not sure if we can we uh, input a g of x perhaps and see if we can compare the two um, so let's try adding another function uh, yeah there's a g of x let's do maybe something similar x squared minus 5x uh, minus 5 of course and let's see if we can see those both on the graph yes we can um, so one is a transformation of the other, a translation. And uh, let's have a look in table mode, see if we can compare the two functions. Yes, we can. So we can see that we've got a difference of 10 between the two sets of functions there. So that's very good. 
being able to do the side-by-side -side comparison with those. Right, okay, let's have a look at this sequences function. Now this is a new one on me. Um, so add a sequence. So let's just have a look at uh, what we've got here, explicit expression, recursive first order, recursive second order. So let's try maybe a recursive first order. Um, so we've got u0, so I presume we can put our starting value here. Uh, so let's keep it nice and simple, let's say that's 3. And then what I think we need to describe the sequence here, so we've got un, Let's just, again, keep it nice and simple. Let's have u n plus four. So it should be adding four each time. And presumably if we go to display values, we've got a sequence there, yeah. So we've got a starting value of three, uh, and then we're going up four each time there in our recursive sequence. Okay, so that's quite good. And let's just have a look at the graph of that. Yeah, okay, that's quite good there. We've got a linear graph. Uh, showing the sequence increasing each time. Right, so that's quite a good mode actually, I haven't seen a mode similar to that before. And statistics mode, okay, that's going to be very useful. It appears we've got an input here. Uh, now, sizes, I believe, is essentially frequency. So it's the frequency, there's the number of uh, number of values that we have at this particular value. So if I have a value if I input a value of eight here, and let's say there were five um, people with a shoe size of eight, let's say, um, let's say shoe size of nine, maybe there's five people with that, shoe size of 10, maybe two people, yes, definitely looks like frequency. Let's make this the last one, 11, we'll just keep that as one. Um, so we've got a data there. Now histogram. Okay, this is a little bit unusual. I'm not sure yet, without having a look into it, if you're able to do group frequencies. It appears to just do interval from 8 to 8.2. I'll have to look into that because really we want a continuous diagram here, a continuous set of data for histograms. Box, we're seeing that is a box plot. So we're saying the median and third quartile are the same. That might just be the data I've inputted. Um, so let's have a look at the stats. Okay, okay, this is quite good. We've got a summary of the stats here. Minimum value, maximum value, range of three. Um, we've got a mean there of 8.92, standard deviation variance. And yes, yeah, so the third quartile um, is the same as the median there, as expressed in the box plot. And interquartile range is just one. It's perhaps my fault for putting such a limited range of data in there. Uh, but it does seem to have uh, produced the summary statistics there. Uh, sum and sum of squares as well. Um, quite useful. Okay, that's good. That's good. Maybe with a more extensive set of data, uh, that would be a bit more comprehensive. Okay, this is probably the all important function here, probability function, for if you're doing uh, A-level uh, maths or further maths, is that you need, need to have the distribution function. And in fact, on the promotion materials, for the NumWorks calculator, it does say that it is suitable for GCSE and A-level maths. Uh, now we've got a binomial and a normal and a Poisson distribution mode, um, which we would expect to stand. We've also got two other uh, probability uh, modes here, distribution modes. We've got a uniform distribution and an exponential distribution. Um, so that's quite good. That's quite extensive there. Um, lots of different distribution modes to be able to look into. That's going to be... Uh, particularly useful, I think, if you have a statistics heavy bent, if you may be doing um, a statistics qualification, um, maybe you're going to find that those different ones quite useful. Let's go back and have a look. We've got a new regression menu as well. Again, I won't go too much into detail here, but if you've got two different variables to compare, I presume you can input those there and then you can get things like the correlation coefficient, etc., uh, to see how the two sets of variables are related. So again, that's quite useful for statistics. And I believe there is one more mode here. Uh, well, two more modes, we've got settings here and uh, Python. So let's just have a quick look in settings. Well, we've got angle measure, always good to be able to change that. Just got degrees and radians, no gradients there. 
result format, auto a scientific, uh, complex format. I think we've got the um, Cartesian there, or we have modulus and argument form there if you prefer, that's quite good. Uh, language English, let's have a look what other languages are available in French, Spanish, German, Portuguese. Okay, so quite good there, quite a good range. And exam mode, presumably, this is a mode to prevent it from accessing the internet during exams. If you activate, okay, and it will also then delete any uh, data that you have stored. So that's quite useful um, if you're about to go into your exam. You can show the invigilator that you're clearing out your memory just by activating exam mode. Uh, so let's just go back into settings. We've just got the about, and then we've just got a summary of the software version, serial number, etc. Which I presume will be different if it wasn't an emulator, if you had an actual calculator here. Now, the last mode um, is a Python mode. We've got just the beta version at the moment. Now, I have to admit, I don't really know much about Python myself. But I imagine this is quite an extensive feature, has the potential to be quite an extensive feature for programming on the calculator, particularly um, as Python is sort of so well known and maybe there's got the possibility there of transferring programs and files that you would use on a computer onto the calculator. So I, I think there's a lot of potential there, although as I say, I don't know much about that myself. Uh, I'm sure others may be able to explore that a little bit further. So there we go, a brief overlook at the NumWorks calculator. Now just to really summarize the pros and cons of the calculator, well, I quite like the sequences function. I think that's got uh, a lot of potential there. Um, and the probability distribution function, it, it seems to be very useful and very extensive. It's got the summary of statistics and the usual calculation mode. So it's got all the essentials there. It doesn't have as many modes as the class with. Um, and most importantly, perhaps most critically, it doesn't have a solver or any sort of solving features, as far as I can tell uh, in this first impression, uh, which I think is a big disadvantage. I think they're quite useful in terms of helping you out with your qualifications and such. And I do think it is a little bit pricey, or a little bit expensive, for uh, what you actually get there. Now, the calculator does cost $79.99. I'm actually going to put an affiliate link to purchase it on Amazon in the comments below. Uh, if you do purchase it through that, then I will receive a little extra commission at no extra charge to yourself if you did fancy buying one of these calculators. But as I said, I think it's a little bit on the expensive side, but nevertheless, um, it seems to be quite a comprehensive calculator. Honestly, at this point, I would still recommend the Casio Clasweirs above this, simply again, due to price, ease of use, and just the extensive amount of features that the Clasweirs has for its cost. Uh, so there we go. Uh, why not give it a try yourself? The simulator, at least at present, is free for you to try, so I'll put that link uh, below. Uh, as I said, if you do fancy buying one, they are available from the link below. But that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time on The Calculator Guide.